Good morning and Yak Shemash from Nadin in Kyrgyzstan where we continue our trip of this beautiful country with a second loop in the southern lands below this city. We had quite a bit of trouble getting from Osh to Nadin. In the end we did find a solution but we'll share that in a separate video about the logistics of bike travel in this country. And for now we're gonna do this loop uh, below Nadin. So do you want to give some details? Yeah, we were here back in 2019 um, scouting the area on 4x4s and we really liked it so we thought let's bring back the bicycles and see how it is on the bike. So the area is the Atbashi mountain range and we took inspiration from two existing bikepacking routes which is the Tianshan Traverse from bikepacking.com That goes above it yeah, and the Silk Road Mountain Race. That goes below it. 2019. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we've connected these two routes and created a nice loop, which we called the Atbashi Circuit. Circuit. Yes, here you go. <laughs> it's going to be about 450 kilometers and we're going to be climbing around 4,500 meters. So not too bad. Yeah, this route is a bit more low key than the Expedition Alive route we designed south of Osh, which you should totally consider for your next trip. It's just that that route is quite challenging and goes really up high. Uh, this route is a bit more manageable in terms of distance and climbing meters. And also it's a much more frequented route by tourists in this area. Mm -hmm. uh, generally the center and eastern part of Kyrgyzstan is more, uh, more traversed by tourists. So we're more likely to find 4x4s and other passing cyclists on the way. A um, few notes. We are at the Khan Tengri Hotel here in Nadin. This is the old one. The new building is just behind and is a bit more expensive. But this older building uh, gives you a double room for about $33. Uh, what yeah. is that in SOM? 2,800 SOM. Something like that. And that's a great price. Uh, we are calling it the start and finishing point of our trip for convenience. So that when you come from Bishkek or from Osh, uh, to this city, you can easily get in and out of this hotel after the before and after the loop. Um, I'm wearing sleeves because I burnt my wrists on Expedition Ally, and I got these from our friends in Bishkek, so very happy with that. One more note, for this route you need something uh, important, which is the Chinese border permit. Since we're cycling very close to the Chinese border, you need this special permit, which you can yeah. get at any travel agency um cbt is the most known but yeah, but cbt is kind of a ripoff so you don't want to be booking with them their prices keep on going up and there's like this western tax involved and they're just not that reliable they take really long to deliver it to you so you should totally check out this instagram account which are our friends from france they have a ton of knowledge on kyrgyzstan made a beautiful book about this country with different routes for 4x4s hiking cycling etc and they actually have a website where you can book the permits um, with them with a fast delivery time and a solid price so you should totally check that out if you're thinking of cycling this loop and i think without further ado it's time to finish this banana before it turns black in our bike picking bags as it always does and uh, to start this route let's see what we find
So we've just made it to Adbashi, the uh, little town that shares the name with this mountain range that you've been seeing. And uh, we're gonna make a small change to the route. You wanna explain why? Well, we're covered in dust. We were riding on a dirt road, which was just fine, but the problem was that there were a lot of cars and they were lifting all this dust all the time. So yeah. it wasn't very pleasant. Yeah, like fat rubber tires on the Jeeps, lifting everything up into our faces. <laughs> this is the stretch between Akmoyun and Adbashi. And uh, we had originally planned to go a little bit further on the secondary road, but we're gonna go uh, to the main road, which goes all the way to the Chinese border and is asphalted. So it's gonna be a little bit more dull, but hey, we're gonna have a, at least a dustless experience. Yeah, we're also gonna stock up now in town because there's not much after Adbashi. So we're gonna get food for five, maybe six days, just in case. Yeah, it's one of the things that you need to know about this route is that food-wise, it's a big challenge. Water-wise, probably not, but it's better to stock up here and stock up as much as you can so that until the Chinese border and further, you're pretty set. Yeah. All right, let's do it. <sighs> oh, nice monument, by the way, right? So since we uh, expect this loop to take us about a week, we've also stocked up on alcohol. We bought this. It's um, like there's a little shop a chain in Kyrgyzstan called the Neyman or Hema. It, it spells in the uh, alphabet that we use, and it's uh, supposed to be about 217 soms. It's a liter of ethyl alcohol at 80%. So hopefully this works for the fire in the uh, alcohol stuff that we use. We've stocked up on food, ready to go. The last bit of sunshine. Yeah. Get this thing charged. It's nice. I haven't used the battery pack yet. I'll use it tonight for my phone. Ready. So. so. Is it just two sticks? What is that cucumber and buckwheat? That's for you. It's a gift. To carry? Because you're gonna be cooking. This is pure like, aluminum, very thin, sticky. They they are not supposed to bend like this. Let's try. It's kind of scary moment actually. It's like scary but magical. Yeah. Okay, let's make it hot. <sighs> Ooh, I think it works. Yeah? Um, the alcohol is definitely like, a bit slower, but it's, uh, it's priming right now. This 
on secondary. weather surrounds the lake naturally. Yeah. Also I feel like we're putting in like a formal request to the weather gods yeah. <laughs> by being outside this long. Yeah. With these clouds. Ooh thunder. Are you sure? Yeah. Blessings of the Holy Weather God be upon you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Time for a cafe. Oh, yes. We're about 13 kilometers away from the first border control uh, for which you need the Chinese border permit to also cycle this route. And there's um, this small village uh, slash just a single house where a family lives and apparently you can buy food there. I went to take a look. They have three bottles of drinks, one sort of fruity chips kind of weird thing and lollipops. So unless you want any of those items this thing isn't going to set you up. It's about 75 kilometers uh, from the Chinese border, if you believe the blue plates that line this road. So we're going to go on, see if we can find uh, at least water from a river. Got it. Filter, you can make distance. Yeah. Okay, see you soon. Yeah. We need to fix that brake one day.
we've just uh, passed the border. Couldn't film, actually I took a photo on my phone, they told me to delete it. So they're pretty uptight. Um, but we got through just fine. You just need that Chinese border permit for this section of Kyrgyzstan all the way to Kolsu and then to get out again back to Nadin on this loop. Keep it in mind, make sure you have the original copy with you, it's very important. I wonder if it's actually hummus inside or if it's like just chickpeas in water. No, no, it's chickpeas. <laughs> it doesn't sound like it. So you want to bet on the likelihood that there's actual hummus in here? <laughs> I don't know how much you paid. If you paid the premium price, there should be hummus. Oh god, it squirts. <laughs> but yeah. ooh! Wow. It does look like it. Wow. Where did you find this? A little shop? It smells kind of funky. I need to wash my hands. So what do you think? It's legit. Um, it tastes different to the hummus we're used to, but it feels good. It tastes good. I think it's just chickpea based. Yeah. We have been uh, crossing dry riverbeds for the past hour or so and as you just saw that stream we found we filled up some water it was the first stream in many many hours um, now however we've come at a river this is not the kind of river that we found in Alai which was much worse you know brown and bulky this is uh, much more tame um, but you do have to watch out on this route we would say that considering the riverbeds we've just been crossing, they're mostly dry, uh, in June and maybe even early July, that's probably not the case, also depending on the weather. So this route is probably best done in August, beginning of August, like us right now. Otherwise, if you do it in June, you might end up um, like that. Yeah, that can happen. We've uh, now walked up the river a little bit. There is an old bridge, as you can see, it's no longer functional. And uh, now we are on, literally on the old way to the bridge. It's all grassy and nice, so we're gonna set up camp here. As you can see, the storms are forming. 
it's 5.30, usually this happens uh, around this part of Kyrgyzstan. So we're gonna set up camp, cross the river tomorrow. You'll see it then. Now we have to hide. Okay, let's do it. The front is coming. Yeah. Yeah, it's not good. Definitely. Okay, B. The paprika is gonna go, okay. and the uh, the onion. Making buckwheat? Yeah. Nice. Buckwheat every night. <laughs> every yeah. single night. spicy? Yeah, a uh, little bit, but not, not that bad actually. I'm just happy the rain is gone.
don't know why I put my sleeves back on. It's like I put the sleeves and then the clouds come. Like my mom would say, you can still get some burns in the clouds. <laughs> sure. Well, that was a little bout of sunshine as we arrived into the yurt camp, but it's long gone. It lasted 10 seconds or so. And we made it to Kelsu, or at least the area of Kelsu, because Kelsu is actually the glacial lake behind these mountains. Uh, we've already seen it in 2019 on a scouting trip. We're not going to go there, but you can make it part of this route by hiking or cycling there. Mm -hmm. Um, other than that, we stay, uh, we're going to stay at this Golden Moon Yurt House and uh, Yurt and Guest House uh, camp. And do you want to run through the facilities real quick? Yeah, it seems to be new from this year and it's just next to the exit of the pass, so it's very practical. And they have yurts and they have a guest house we're just going to take a look at. And it's a 1,300 som per night, which is... Um, yeah, just bed and breakfast. If you want dinner, 1,900 som. So it's about 22 euros or 22 dollars per night. Which is steep and steeper than in Songko and other places in Kyrgyzstan. But then again, you have these views. It's a pretty magnificent place. And it's also kind of the only stay on the whole loop. So it's worth paying the extra uh, few euros to have a nice comfy stay here for the night. Which is what we're going to do. Hopefully the sun comes back. It's so cold. Let's see if we can uh, <laughs> give you some nice atmospheric shots of this place. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, yes. And doing this tomorrow and potentially like risking getting stuck somewhere here we could ask maybe some of the drivers like maybe someone here has done this route but this one i think is out of question because it's just so steep if we're gonna like put people on there i think they're gonna hate us forever and ever until we turn i'm gonna hate us <laughs> <laughs> hey you want to come you want to come 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 yeah. You can be here. You wanna you here, wanna go here. to the bike? Photo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right here, right here. Yeah. There we go. 
Look at there. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> I must say the kids are so cooperative here. Look at that. Oh, that's amazing. Fresh bread. They nailed it, huh? Is it nice and warm inside? Yeah, it's getting there. So, good morning. Uh, after a, uh, a night of light yet satisfying sleep, we yeah. are here in the yurt camp and there's a few things we have to run you through. First of all, um, we're not having that great weather and back in 2019 we were in this same area on a scouting trip for a photography tour uh, and we already saw the lake that this place is all about. So we're going to put it as a, a recommended uh, spot in the route. Go to Kolsu. Yeah, Kolsu, so you can see the lake, you can do a day hike or maybe take your bike. We're not going to show you, so you're going to have to see for yourself. Um, secondly, we are uh, in conflict about the route out of here, because we originally planned uh, a pretty steep pass. Yesterday we found out, as you probably saw in the footage, that this road is way too steep and way too high and it would put the sort of average gradient of this very manageable route way, way up and that's why we don't want to include it. So we're going to take the same way back, which means you come in and out of this place on the same road. And by bike, that's not always that encouraging, but we think it's worth it to come here. And just like us, you might get lucky and find some nice tourists or locals mm -hmm. who are willing to drive you back up to the pass so that you can go down the same way you came. Yeah. So we're gonna try and do that. <laughs> we're gonna try and do that. We found uh, an, a nice two French guys who are driving this, uh, this white car. They rented it here and they're willing to drive us up. So we're gonna Tetris our bikes into the car, see if it works. Yeah, and get again, up. one hour of time, maybe yes. two, two hours. <laughs> yeah, save a bit of strength on the legs. <laughs> <laughs> no car in Kyrgyzstan has insurance. <laughs> can, can I try uh, your, your bike before yeah. Yeah. Sure. holding it? Sure, sure. Uh, my manga. And, uh, really huge of bikes. And this is the first time I was telling you, I see a bench. You just need to change the gear without pedaling. Okay. So you stop pedaling when you change. But if I'm pedaling and if I want to change, then you stop pedaling for a second, change, and then okay. continue. Yeah. You stop yeah. for like um, half Microsecond. a second, you just stop pedaling. So okay. On sort tout, Hugo, avant de tout uh, remettre. Nice. <laughs> Pretty so cool. smooth. And then it's the best when you're climbing because you can easily just like put it in the middle. There we go. And let's watch it here. Like this? Yeah. That should work. 
I heard it's, uh, it's a kind of other crowd in people. In the South Shore, yes, it's full of people. Maybe, maybe all right let's go okay, goodbye, guys. thank you for everything okay all the best. so maybe that was the noise we yeah. heard yesterday yeah. it's like a whistle yeah <coughs> but it's, it's kind of loud no very loud very loud okay yes. that's that's one sometimes you don't see them but oh, here you hear them Ah, <laughs> uh, that's so nice of them. Kartoska with potatoes. Wow. And I bought the whole batch. She sells them every day apparently. You bought the whole thing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now we don't have to cook for lunch. Nice. And I bought grapes too for dessert. Nice. Oh, can't wait to sit for lunch. Here's your money. My cash? Your cash. Nice, so I can have two more. Mm -hmm. Wow, all oh, these things. You can bite them like that. <laughs> Looks like a big omelet. Mm. <laughs> omelet bread. <laughs> So they put potato, onion, and dough, and they fried it. Yeah, yeah. And it's delicious. Mm. really ought to uh, find like a blacksmith or something who can bend these back. I have to choose four every evening. This 
sun is going. Um, Goodbye, bad. sun. Better come back tomorrow. <laughs> Please be here tomorrow. Maybe a threat. We've had too many rainy nights. We should be here. Remember, now my nickname is Bastard. the Barefoot Bastard. <laughs> he walks rivers, he walks grasslands, hills and mountain peaks. He cycles barefoot. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe. You keep on your own. <laughs> Literally, I have like a metal attachment in my feet. You want to? Oh, yeah, sure. Thank you. Beautiful buckwheat. Mm -hmm. I still haven't figured out why this isn't popular in Europe. Not yet. Wait for it. It's gonna be the new, the new kale. What caused the buckwheat <laughs> hype in Europe? It was Tristan's videos. <laughs> All those buckwheat close-ups. <laughs> So this morning, after that beautiful last camp night, we rolled into the city of Narin on a beautiful descent. And this is actually something that we've come to love. This strategy really works. We uh, camp just outside of the town or the place that we're gonna stay in accommodation and then arrive in the morning to make full use of that accommodation for the whole day, which we're looking forward to because we're back here at the Khan Tengri Hotel, which is the start and finish of the Adbashi circuit, which means we're done. It's time for final impressions <laughs> because the loop is complete. Yeah, well, we did it actually faster than what we had anticipated. We were planning for nine days and today is actually day seven. Yeah. So we were faster because there was a lot of asphalt in the beginning, which we're not used to and just made us roll quicker. Yeah. And I think we were also a little bit stressed uh, because of food. We yeah. were carrying with us food for about seven days. so. We were really pushing it to make sure that we would actually make it. Exactly. And for you, as a piece of information for this route, something good to know is that Karabuluk, the last town on the main road on the west end of this route, and Akmus on the east end of this route, the 80 to 90% of the route is between those two towns on the southern end. And you can't really find any food resupplies, mm -hmm. except for maybe the Chinese border town, this um, Torugard place, where there might be a restaurant but it was slightly vague we didn't uh, we weren't able to figure that out so um i think, I think that about it. wraps it up as we said the adbashi circuit is complete and we hope that you consider riding it uh in uh, on your time in in kyrgyzstan it's uh, a wonderful loop to see some of the less visited uh, parts of kyrgyzstan at least for cyclists we hope that the loop helps you make it in a in a comfortable way and uh, you know start and finish here in, in Narin. Just don't forget your border permit because you need it. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't forget it and do get it through this Instagram account as we said before. They have a website, you can get the permit fairly easily. Uh, lastly, we want to thank all of our partners which are right over here for their support in making this route. You can find my daily GPX files. They're not perfect, but you can see them and see the photos and stories of this trip on Komoot. The link to that collection is down below. And you can find the final perfected GPX track of the Atbashi circuit on Belen's profile on Komoot, which is also linked down below. Do you want to go get a shower? Shower, food, and the bed. Yes. I, need, I need a proper bed. It's time to rest. We're yes. going to go back to Bishkek tomorrow sit out uh, the rest of our time in Kyrgyzstan in the city to process and edit this video and uh, yeah we'll be back soon in Europe from Europe
let's see what we're gonna find. Let's see. <laughs> All right. Bye bye. See you later. <laughs> oh, nice. What a trip. What a trip. Whoa. I need to sleep.